This NFL picks week six edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars a win bet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Crane? Dog. Oh baby, four and one. That's right. Still talking about the Giants. Uh no, it's Sean, great it's, to see your your it, excitement. Oh, I not mean, only you bringing a laser level of focus to the picks, which I true. know I appreciate. The yeah. fans appreciate. Thank but you. the the passion. The fandom, Ryan, because you've you've dabbled, right? You were you were wearing your Washington football team shirt on the uh, Thursday night props episode. We did a bonus Thursday night props episode. Highly recommend checking out with uh, J Mark. That was a from Bears the, uh, troll. Yes, thank you. Uh, you were you were that you had roughneck fever. You briefly considered the Chargers. I did enter the and, transfer portal. Yeah, you entered the <laughs> transfer portal. There was talk of uh, FCS football being your favorite no. for for like half a week. No, we there got were, you uh, you go, you went all in on Coach Pry, and now it's back to where you belong, Ryan, as a fan of oh. the New York Giants. Oh. <laughs> you know what it is? As a youth uh, sports coach myself, you can identify a good coach, and you know the, the kids go, they they try out for these teams, and you're quickly just judging the coach. And Brian Dable, you see that excitement coming off the field. Joe Shane. A lot of people have talked about this, but that head rub between him and Brian Dable, <laughs> you might as well have opened that might as well have been Tom Brady and his son. Those are two <laughs> men that love each other. You have a smart guy in the booth calling plays. You're playing to win the game. A defensive coordinator who looks like he might have collected a couple uh, uh white envelopes filled with cash back in his day. Wink Martindale. You love Wink Martindale. I do. I mean, how how do you how do you not like a guy named Don who goes by Wink? Hey, as a as a fe- as a guy who also rocks a sweet chain, I can I have some respect <laughs> for Wink Martindale. Uh, we are of course live on youtubecom gambling podcast. Shout out to Andrew Rob, always a favorite part of the week. D Bettis checking in. Of course, you remember D Bettis. His son hit a fourteen team uh, teaser, not even a straight up parlay, a teaser. Hooked his son up with the gift card. He said thanks for that. Uh, we got some Eagles going to sodomize the cowgirls. Let's go. Uh, RT must be newer to the show. Are you guys from the East Coast originally? Why are you both fans of NFC East? Great question. Uh, How did you get into sports gambling, Sean? <laughs> yeah, great I mean, question. There's no, uh, there's not a ton of real football fans on the West Coast. So. No. Now, you know, Justin Decker is the only one I've met, no. and he's a Chargers <laughs> fan. Uh, yeah, no, I'm originally from outside Philly. Uh, R- uh, Ryan, of course. Uh, Hashtag Jersey Legend. Me, ha- Al Harrington. <laughs> There's a long list. I gotta keep keep tabs. Well, you, J- Joe Theismann, of course, also in the New Jersey <laughs> Hall of Fame. Uh, before we get to the NFL picks, I think we have to weigh in on Devonte Adams, of course, vicious assault. Hashtag Lock him up. I tweeted that they should put him in the same cell as Henry Ruggs, and it was clear some oh, people did not think. Did they did, not get the joke? <laughs> they didn't understand that I was joking. They're oh, like, no. "What do you mean? He just pushed the guy." It's like, yeah, obviously I'm being sarcastic. Uh, if, if a camera guy kind of hops in, uh, what what are we doing? Can, can we can we say what everyone's thinking? What's that? City of Kansas City, another soft move. Your water <laughs> doesn't cure hangovers, and your present charges. That is not a. That is not a. I mean, come on. What charges are you gonna press? Like, what are they? What are they gonna do? I guess 
He has to pay like a two hundred fifty dollar fine, which that's that. Yeah. Well, oh, come on, dude. Pay attention where you're walking. There are grown I fucking almost, men here. I almost wish it was like a uh, his fine was like ten thousand dollars, so he could do the Randy Moss move and show pennies. up with a giant <laughs> paper bag. Uh, that's what if you guys, the younger audience, might not know, Ryan, but uh, Randy, Randy Moss was fined ten thousand dollars for doing the fake oh. mooning, where this that is a disgusting act. Where that uh, sound drop originated from, he got fined ten thousand dollars. Horrible. He, he showed up in the le- to the league office with a brown paper bag, and they said, uh, "Wait, how are you paying for this?" He said, "Straight cash, homie." So if you've ever That's heard also the where phrase, the "straight cash, homie" came from. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm. All right, enough messing around, Ryan. It's time to get to the NFL picks. Never forget, Randy Moss dragged Chad Pennington into the NFL. Oh yeah, you want some straight cash, homie? I'll tell you where you can get some straight cash over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Use that link to sign up. I did it in Arizona when I was out for the Eagles game. I have a win bet account in other states. A little inside secret. You can sign up if you go to a new state and you also qualify for the bonus. Bet a hundred dollars, get a hundred dollar free bet. I wisely spent it on the Steelers money line. Uh, which was a fun five minutes, but again, it's you know, I'm a hashtag Dejans only. What do you want from me? Uh, the win, build your bet. Uh, those are so fun. We just gave out one for Thursday night football on the Thursday night props episode. Uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll give out one for Sunday night as well on the uh, NFL props, which we are taping tomorrow. But again, so many ways to get down, so many ways to win. Spun the parlay wheel number mm. of times, right? Mm. Favorite part about win bet, the parlay wheel. What? It's a wheel you get a spin when you bet a parlay. What? Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Let's see 21 or older and present in the state where play through win bet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Oh, Sean. Well, Ryan, real quick before we get into it, uh, research and uh. perfect transition to the Thursday night game. Uh, live in the YouTube chat, research Got spherical it. Earth, who seems mm. to be having some battle with research flat Earth. We'll let we'll let you guys decide that offline whether or not the Earth is flat or spherical. But um, he said, did he pull a Carson Wentz and sprain both of his ankles? You know, Ryan, he brings up a great point because every once in a while, <laughs> if I get down the dumps, yeah. I'm sad. I lost some bets. Uh, you know, pick didn't go my way. I just go back and remember the time where Carson Wentz was. Uh, list is questionable with two sprained what? ankles. I was gonna say, what's and it, it, it just warms my soul. It's one of the funnier injury reports I've ever read. Um, <laughs> that and uh, Brittany Griner, who was listed out for personal reasons, yeah. which <laughs> I get it. You have to put out an injury report, <laughs> but it's just so weird to see out personal reasons on it. We we know the news story. No one's expecting her to show up in the game. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, look. Uh, Popovich was a pioneer in the bullshit uh, statuses. <laughs> uh, I think he was the creator of the coach's decision uh, before they got mad. I, look, what what's your go-to highlight that you go when you're when you're trying to feel good? Uh, other than thinking about Carson Wentz, it's, I, I like the Troy Aikman hit from Levar Arrington. That's a fun one. That that's a good I, one. Go I back mean, to that one a lot. For me, uh, obviously, you know the Super Bowl 2017. That's an epic run, but. Be be in Dallas week. Oh. I'm rocking the Brian Dawkins jersey. Forty four to six. Forty four to six. That team that got into the playoffs went on a magical run. Uh, they were four six and one. Got to five six and one with that win. Snuck into the playoffs. They needed a bunch of things to go right early on in the day. Sunday night comes. I'm visiting my folks. My <laughs> dad. It was a magical day. My dad had just gotten a new deep fryer for Christmas. Ryan. He was deep frying everything he could get his hands on. Sounds it was it right. was a magical magical night. And uh, yeah, I mean the uh, yeah the turnovers, the 44 to six, the just undressing of Tony Romo uh, as a quarterback was, it was an all timer. I mean, that's a good moment too. You ever want to have fun time? Just watch Tony Romo drop that, <laughs> drop that ball, oh, him, him fumbling the snap in the, in the playoff game. Back when backup great. quarterbacks were the holders. <laughs> I mean, we're dating ourselves, Sean. All right. Let's get uh, to it. We're getting to prime video, which by the shout out to prime video. Did you hear they hired Marshawn Lynch? Very. Uh, I did. I actually wrote that down. Yeah. On my notes, 
Uh, Do we ever tell the story about um, <laughs> about Marshawn Lynch? Do you remember uh, if we ever told it? I, I, think I don't we heard think it. so. Have we? I think we heard it from Decker. And again, this is probably mostly urban legend, but it was like Decker knew someone who was a real estate agent who knew Marshawn Lynch, who just bought a new house, and he he broke in the house by going out of his way. It, it was like a really nice house, had six bathrooms, and went out of his way to take a, a shit in every yeah. one of the bathrooms um, to like break the house in. So yeah, I mean, just I, legend. I get that, right? Like you, I mean, it's a it's a it's a come up story, Sean. <laughs> it really is. First time in my life, I was able to take eight eight shits in my house and not have to flush the toilet. <laughs> All right, Thursday night Prime Video. What's the tip? Well, prime. I, I, so far, thumbs up on Prime because I like that all twenty two channel. Well, here, the, my beef is uh, occasionally, like we were flying out for the uh, Eagles Cardinals game, and I was trying to watch on the on the uh, on the laptop and with the flight tech issues. No, no, but like you can't. I mean, a you can't stream it on a plane, but b all these public places, airports, bars, like they a lot of these guys don't have. Amazon Prime set up, which is really annoying because they're like public spaces that display the game. A lot of them don't have Amazon Prime. That's why only West Coast problem. Yeah, I mean this is I, I you know you the bartenders just don't give a fuck about doing anything. I it can our t, any TV in this fucking studio slash office no, our, can receive a remote signal. All right, so and we're not running sophisticated <laughs> shit over here. Thursday night football. The Washington football team, aka the Washington Redskins, aka the Washington Commanders, are heading to Chicago, where the Bears. It's it's a pick 'em. It all it, the the fact that neither one of these teams is a favorite here does make sense because I would tell you this team doesn't deserve to be favored. It would be My, the first result <laughs> minus one ten each way on the money line. Thirty eight is the total. Comically low, but doesn't quite seem low enough. I will say. You know, we dove into the props on the Thursday night props episode, which Sean uh, mentioned. You should check out. Uh, nice and short. I, Chicago might be able to pass against. Well, I know a lot yeah. of people are going to say, like, hey, they're going to shut down the run. The Bears won't be able to do anything. But if they take some shots, the the Redskins have been uh, beaten deep. And, and on the flip side, Carson Wentz top five in yards. Like, they're unless they just stop letting him throw the ball that many times. And they get Brian Robinson involved. That's that's the narrative here. So I I don't know if I'm necessarily smashing the under button here. I think we could have some fun play from Justin Fields and Carson Wentz. Although I did see a trend. This is Carson Wentz's last game. This has to be like a back against the wall like survival. He randomly shows up on Thursday night games. I think he's six and zero career prime time games. He's good on prime time. He's the Bizarro anti Kirk Cousins. Carson Wentz sixteen and eight straight up in prime time. Yeah, that's. But here's here's Justin the, Fields zero and four straight up in prime time. This is this is uh, yeah. I, there's a lot working here. I I think you know Wentz the turnover worthy plays. He's right up there with um with Fields with Fields. <laughs> I think the difference is I, I there's some the, the the Bears defense does some decent stuff. I mean you know they've only gotten eight sacks but they've they've only given up 197 passing yards per game. And now some of that is they've been attacked. More through the ground, but the the Bears team has hung around in games. They haven't really gotten their ass kicked. I know they lost uh, that Green Bay game, kind of being the exception. But there was that play, like you know, Fields on the goal line probably should have been a touchdown. Like they 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 hang around in games. Um, I do like the stats that we gave out for teams on Thursday Night Football. That's usually pretty good. Although first year head coaches are eight and nineteen against the spread. For Thursday night, so again, not a great sign for the Bears. But I, I if think you shrink that stat down to just from since 2020, it's one and 12 straight up. Really? Yeah. Or um, sorry, one and 11 straight up. That being said, though, I can't take Carson Wentz on the road. The Bears are getting their number one cornerback back, Jalen Johnson. That is huge to me. I, I I think they're like their passing defense was able to do okay yardage wise, but they were still letting up some plays that they really had no business. Um, yeah, you know, the, the Bears' offense isn't dynamic by any means, but man, just the vibes are just so wretched from this Commanders team. And you have Ron Rivera calling out his quarterback and then apologizing. The <laughs> yeah, what does but, that mean, though? Like, is uh, they are they gonna come together? Uh, no. Is there a massive coaching edge? 
Uh, no, I I don't think. Uh, I mean, I think they're actually kind of similar versions. They're guys who probably should be defensive coordinators and not head coaches. Although Eber flew it so early on, and we haven't seen much from Justin Fields. Eber flew. I'm gonna still hold out hope. Like we know what Ron Rivera is. He's the ultimate. He's he's our generation's uh, Jeff Fisher, Ryan. Where. He's never going to yeah. win a playoff game. He's going to go seven and nine. He's Wait, one and four right and 10, now. He needs you know? to win some games. Seven and ten, and he's behind the eight ball. Uh, last little stat here: currently, uh, the Commanders have more W's on their helmet than in the the uh, oh. standing column. You're welcome, Ryan. Stole that one from Twitter. Uh, Bears on pace to have the <laughs> lowest passing yards for a team since 1980. If Colby followed the NFL, he would be loving this Bears team right now. Uh, commanders cornerback William Jackson also out. So I, I think the Bears will be able to run the ball on the commanders. See, I, I think they're going to have to pass the ball. And it really, I'm telling you it's possible, but I'm also going to tell you I can't bet on this coach to be prepared on a short week. Yeah. And I can't bet on Justin Fields to beat any team with his arm. So if they, if they dare him to beat him with the arm, you know, it'll be good. I, I'm just, fun. I, it, I think I'm just going to take every home team from now until the end of Thursday night football. <laughs> okay. And what, I mean, what do we got? 12 games, 12 Thursday yeah, night games left. Uh, 17 minus six. So maybe, maybe 11? 11. Yeah. So we got 11. Wait, six. Well, I'm, I'm already taking this, this yeah, one. So uh, I think, I think I'll be in the 60 to 70%. I, I'm going home team here. You, I really have to see an angle not to take. Bears getting almost 70% of the bets. That is scary. <laughs> Uh, we've had a little bit of some reverse line movement. Uh, Chicago has not covered a first half, so they've had to come from behind when they've come back. Uh, give me Washington. I I think really here. I I think if you're Carson Wentz, like this has you got called out by your coach. You're like comically out of the division race already. This is a this is a game that you know you can win. You're I I, I think but, but of the quarterbacks I, I guess, in the National Football League, Carson Wentz is, is better than Justin Fields, and you can't say that about too many matchups. So I say the quarterback's better. I say the coach is better. I like the situation for the more veteran squad. With the, I, I don't know if the coach is better, and I would. Also I think the say, coach will have the team more prepared. I, I would. I, I don't know about that. I, I, flew I, hasn't 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 shown me a ton in terms yeah, of it's small sample size, but I, uh, they, they showed up. Um, I, I think they've, I think they've been competitive. So I, I don't know. I'm going bears. Okay. We'll agree to gr- disagree Sunday, 10 AM kick here on the West coast, 1 PM on the East coast, Tampa heads to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the Steelers are an eight point home dog plus three ten on the money line minus four Oh five for the bucks. 44 is the total. All the crazy, like this is the first time in 40 years uh, that the Pittsburgh Steelers have been a big dog. <laughs> now it's the same thing, but for home dog. Yeah. Um. So they're they're a close your eyes special. They underperformed the spread last week by over 21 points. We know it's especially strong when you have the home dog angle. Uh, you have a team from Florida coming up north. Weather doesn't matter yet. Here's the problem, and there's a cup there. We have multiple close your eyes specials this week. The, there's quarter, there's backup quarterbacks involved, or quarterback changes involved, or new rookie quarterback, you know, coming out and uh, facing Buffalo and now Tampa in, in his second week. Tough spots, and honestly, like I, I'm gonna ride with the Steelers in the close your eyes special because obviously yeah. this is the spot you take them, but. It's, it's I see, ugly. I, I see the Bucks angle. I I I think I think you have a similar argument in terms of the Brady's now not covered three straight games. You have you have some other kind of undercurrents that are pretty strong, but Tomlin thirteen two and one home dog. <laughs> uh, Pat Fryermuth looks like he's going to be out for this game. To me, that 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 Falcons game was a red flag as far as the Bucks because. The Bucks team we knew before the Brady we've known of old that they lost two games in a row. That was an and Atlanta's defense isn't that great. They should have won by way more. Like they shouldn't have let them back into that game. I I think that was a red flag. And this this Bucks team they're only averaging twenty point six points per game. They are twentieth in offense, five point three yards per play. Like this team, it, it's not the same. I don't team. really know what to think. It it's it's just not that same level of dominance now. Maybe I would not be shocked if there's any team that's going to be a second half team. I think it would be this this Bucks team. 
Um, I, I mean, it's a non-conference road spot. Like they just have no reason to get up for this game at the Steelers, right? And I, I thought I test Kenny Pickett didn't look horrible. I know you see the score and you say like thirty-eight to three, he played like shit. Deontay Johnson dropped a bunch of balls. They they missed field goals. They had some like fourth and makeable plays that they couldn't convert I, on. I, I I don't think he looked completely lost. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but I also don't think this is entering like the dog conversation. Uh, but but it's a close your eyes special. But and, also and, too, and what like, happens? Gross shit's gonna happen. Uh, it, it it's to me to me last week's game was more a statement on how good this Bills defense is. Like everyone talks about their offense, and Gabe Davis got going. The deep shots were there. Um, they have a good I, defense, I miss yeah. I misread the situation spot. Like they clearly were focused and dialed in and not looking ahead towards the Chiefs, but. I don't. I don't think enough people are talking about how good that Bills defense is now. No, they're, they're and I, and good, I don't yeah. think this Bucks defense isn't as special as they've been in previous years. So give me the Steelers plus eight. It is Todd Bowles though. He tends to he he can scheme up. Uh, it, it's an aggressive defensive style, which you know can work well against a young quarterback. So we'll we'll, we'll see. I, I certainly am not going to fade the close your eye special. Which by the way. Two and zero this year so far. Kenny Pickett uh, did okay against the blitz, for what that's worth. And uh, Jonathan in the chat pointing out it's a nice teaser on the Buck side. I, I see that. I just you know the forces are strong with the close your eyes special. All right, moving along, we got the Bengals. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase heading back to New Orleans. Nolens take on the Saints. They're a one point favorite, minus one thirty on the money line. Saints plus one ten. Forty three is the total. Since he is on a back to back road spot here, something Joe Burrow has done pretty well on. And he's he's been great after a loss. Eleven and three ATS after a straight up loss. T. Higgins, uh missed. How's he looking? It's a sprained ankle, dude. Like, come on. You Neither. gotta play. He was he was sighted on the um outdoors on the separate training facility field, which to me that's a sign you'll play, because uh, if he's if he's really that bad, you completely shut it down on Wednesday. You're not if you're really that worried about it. To me, it's like testing yep. how much you can do on Sunday. They're gonna so need him. I think he'll play. I don't know how effective he'll be. Um, this Saints defense has been really, really bad to me. That that's been kind of the surprise. Uh, they haven't been able to get the pass rush that they've normally gotten in previous years. Um, New right Orleans. in the middle on the adjusted sack rate, I think they're sixteenth. So but yeah. usually, I felt like they were like pretty oh, good. Absolutely, and I think, you know, you saw it last week. How many big plays did Seattle have against the Saints team? And how does Cincinnati? How have they historically excelled? You know, some could say they're the same team they were last year. They're just not hitting the explosive plays. And you know, the film nerds are saying Joe Burrow struggling with the too high look. And that you know everything we said about Patrick Mahomes and his inability to be patient, like Burrow's having some of those same problems. Yeah, and I'll, unfortunately, but, I don't think his coach is as sharp as Andy Reid in terms of dialing up those adjustments. Maybe not as sharp as as the the Bills uh, Brian Dable uh, was. Uh, or, or, or are you going to say uh, Pete Carroll, Ryan? Because Geno Smith and the and the uh, and the Seahawks lit this Saints defense up. Well. Yeah, I mean they that that's my point. So Burrow, you know, this team just got destroyed by a similar kind of structured offense, right? The uh, questions about the offensive line, although Seattle has an actual good offensive line, but they have talent. They take a lot of deep shot. They want to take deep shots. They want to yeah. they want to be a team that can move the ball. And but- they they converted on deep shots. I mean, uh Bengals left tackle uh Jonah Williams dislocated his kneecap, played through it. Well, um, that's unclear badass. if he's gonna play. Uh, Lyle Collins, he's been banged up. He like sucks, and he hasn't <laughs> been playing well either. I, maybe they should get someone else in. Uh, there. It seems like Andy Dalton will get one more start here. That's being reported now that he's gonna start. Okay, yeah, it seemed like it was going that way. Uh, to me, another big injury we're talking about is Chris Olave. Um, you know, he's out, right? He got lit up pretty Receivers bad in the concussion, him, you know? so I would be shocked. Um, Michael Thomas still not practicing. 
I I just don't know what they're gonna do passing wise without Olave. Michael like he Thomas was, is trending towards playing. From what I read, I no I no no. Like I was reading the same stuff, but I don't he know didn't. If I buy it. He didn't practice today, yeah. and I feel like we've gotten swindled by Michael Thomas a ton. I just think he hasn't played a lot of football lately. I think the Saints are missing an, uh, so many skill players. Again, hate to say it, I do think this is a Taysom Hill game. Oh, uh, no, stop, who stop. is like a poor stop man's it. poor man's uh, Lamar stop Jackson. It. Uh, you you don't see the similarities, Ryan. I don't see color, so it's easy for me to see the similarities between Lamar Jackson. You're being very disrespectful. Taysom what? Hill can't throw a pass like Lamar Jackson. Oh, he, he, no, uh, arguably better. Oh, I mean, so, do we see what Lamar oh, Jackson? Oh, those throws Lamar Jackson missed on oh, Sunday night. Ryan. Oh, it's just highly. Taysom dis- Hill's throwing those darts. Highly disrespectful. I am going to be right playing now. a Taysom Hill lineup, and I realize <laughs> oh, I realize I missed the window because. On uh, DK, you got to play him in the quarterback slot, but for only five thousand uh, dollars, let's go. Second best DVOA pass offense, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Second best, mm-hmm. look pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, do you think they look good? He made some bad throws, but yeah, and missed wide open guys. That to me is a red flag. That, that's the yeah. Uh, as far as this game, I'm a little concerned that the public's on the Bengals, but um, RT's pointing out in the chat as well. Uh, teams coming off primetime losses are eight and one. I I I I like this Bengals team because I just the Saints defense is just really bad. Uh, I'm taking Bengals. Yeah, it, I mean it it does. What's the what do you see in the money slits? Because I'm slightly worried that the the public's on Cincinnati, which I don't understand. I mean, if, if you were to ask me which side do I think they're going to be on, I think the. I, why would they be on the Saints? They weren't on the Saints last. They put week. up a ton of points. They're at home. Bengals just lost uh, on the road. They're on the road. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I so th- again, this is one of those games where depending on where you look, it it seems to be it's com- all over. Yeah, but I would say that the the consensus data, Cincinnati's probably getting a little bit more of the action. But where the number is, that can be deceptive, right? Because you have seventy percent of the money on. Cincinnati pick them or Cincinnati plus one or wherever it opened and it moves to minus one. I, I don't think it's as meaningful this early in the week. So I'm with you. I think you take Cincinnati because Joe Burrow should have some time. You mentioned the pass r- rush woes. Uh, we watched Gino just light them up. And, and frankly, we see this a lot, right? The guys come, this is the first game that Jamar chase and Joe Burrow will be playing back in, in Louisiana, Louisiana. So in the, in the, uh, what is it now? It's not this. We'll just call it the Superdome. but it's the wind bet center, right? Yeah. The wind bet super dome uh, <laughs> down there. Let's go baby. Bengals minus one. And ju- yeah, Trevor asking about Winston. He, it sounds like he's close, but he, they're going to give him yeah. another week. I don't, he's not playing. He's like the kid. They just want to like, they want to put bubble wrap on. They want to tell him he's playing so that he <laughs> do, it does. He does all his homework and practice. Jacksonville. Well, he's the team leader. He's probably doing the pregame speeches anyway. Jacksonville heading to Indy. Uh, Indy coming off Thursday night football, uh, arguably one of the greatest games <laughs> ever played uh, per Colby Dant. Indy is taking on Jacksonville here. Jacksonville minus two, minus one thirty on the money line. Or I'm sorry, Indy minus two, minus one thirty on the money line. Jacksonville plus one ten. Forty two is the total. Sean, I was telling you this before the show, but the home team has won this game. In 16 out of the last 17 matchups. Oh my God. That's insane. Cause you go to me uh, early on in the week, if it was today <laughs> or yesterday, you go, Oh, Jags own the Colts. I'm like, right, in Indy? I feel like they had they had well, done was, pretty good. I didn't realize it was this long of a run for both teams. Well, he, here's the interesting part. With that being true, Indy is one thirteen and one against the spread over the last fifteen of those games. Obviously, Indy was favored by a lot of points in a lot of those games, so they were winning but not covering. But uh, that that was that was an interesting statistical anomaly for me. This is like a home home split. Clearly, the AFC South has certain transitive property rules that just apply. We've explained it. Indy (laughs) does not win in Jacksonville. We don't know why. We can try and figure it out. Yeah, eight out of nine here. It's the flip. Yeah. So. I guess there isn't much of a handicap. It's terrifying to take Matt Ryan as a favorite. Teams it, off a Thursday night, two and six for some reason. Eight. <laughs> yeah, that's that, a that, strange nugget. That, that still feels like it doesn't make sense. Travis Etienne, I I thought that was his best it was best game so far of the season. Uh, I still carries. don't think he looks like a running back. No, but he he seems like a. I, I wouldn't a be weapon. surprised if he's yeah he's like a slot receiver Rondale Moore type. Let's get him get the ball in his hand. Yeah, out of the backfield is not. 
his um his best uh best ratio there. Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence completing 71% of his passes with a seven touchdown to one interception ratio in a clean pocket. When pressured, Lawrence is 18 of 48, 207 yards, one touchdown, three picks. He is not dealing well with the pressure, um, which I think I think the Colts might be able to get a little pressure. Um, obviously super, super worried about Indy's offensive line, but I don't know if Jacksonville can really bring the heat against this banged up Indy offensive line. Like we saw Indy's offensive line struggle on the road in Denver, but I think Denver's pass rush is probably their best asset right now as a team. Denver's an elite defense. And Trevor Lawrence just looked flat out bad. Like that bootleg where he rolled out in that Texans game, he just threw it right to the defender, Ryan. And as much as I can't bet on uh, Matt Ryan, I told myself I would not do uh, it. You're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it here. I I think you have to take. There's something going on here in these. You got to know how these teams play each other in the division. Throw the record books out, Ryan. Not that either one of these teams are in many record books. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, maybe he goes. Uh, wh- where do you think about Taylor? Frank Reich said optimistic, but then it w- he didn't practice. Today. I think he probably plays. I, I I think the big the big gap uh, will be the like the past. As crazy as it sounds, Matt Ryan a much 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 nicer matchup. Uh, even though Jacksonville still has an above average pass defense, Denver is like straight up elite. So uh, the other I had a trivia question for you. Yeah. I figured this would be a good one. Tre- Trevor Lawrence, how many times is he taken to the road and won in his career? I think Trevor Lawrence road wins in his career in the NFL. In the NFL, one against the Chargers. One against the Chargers. I knew that without looking it up because they they had lost. What was it? Eighteen <laughs> road games in a row. And I tried to bring that point up when they were playing the Eagles. Oh yeah, you just fucking Homer. Just say oh, yeah, they're road. You, you they're make me sound like the, the alien. No, in, I'm not uh, saying in Men you, in Black. You no, this that gets is his head shot this off is the goes, collective oh, people who. Overlook my handicap of the Eagles Got when I'm it. positive okay. on the Eagles. Uh, Goldilocks <laughs> is going to find her porridge is cold. Trevor Lawrence and the Jags I don't did, get the win. A couple other nuggets. I didn't mention this uh, when we were talking about the Bengals, but Bengals and Colts are on 10 game under streaks, uh, which is insane. Also, Jacksonville and Kansas City are the two only two teams in the NFL who both received. More than half of the action in all five of their games. So they were the public side in all five of their games, Kansas City and Jacksonville. This week, neither is going to be a public side. So, real, yeah, I, I think a lot of people, I mean, just looking at the chat, uh, I, I think, I think a lot of people could talk themselves into Jags. And this is a, you I know, think this is a Frank Reich, Doug P thing. I th- think this closes three. Oh, I don't know if it's going to get all the way to three, but. I think it. I think it more likely moves there than it does the other way. Yeah, Patriots heading to Cleveland, where the Browns. This was three. Some of us may have already got a piece of it. Browns are laying two and a half, minus one forty-five, plus one twenty-five for the Patriots. Forty-three and a half is the total. I've seen the people putting out the Drew Bledsoe, Tom Brady pictures. <laughs> Bailey's happy. Uh, Mac Jones, you already lost your spot. That sucks. Uh, look, the, this is. You can handicap a lot of things here, but to me, what this is all about is Belichick versus teams he hates. Yeah, he had two. There, two, there are two franchises in the NFL that he hates: the Jets mm-hmm. and the Browns. Everyone knows the sto- he ple- he coached for the Browns, but everyone knows the story with the Jets, uh, where he, uh, he he basically told them to go fuck themselves on a napkin. Uh, Patriots gave him up a first round pick for him. Rest is history. Anyway, in those games, first the Jets, he is 76% straight up. First the Browns, he's 80% straight up. Oh my god. I, I I mean if you take out games his first year, the, both these numbers climb up cuz they they both had losses there. I there's nothing more to the handicap. There's a take the two and a half uh, angle here, sure, but this is a the Browns need to run the ball. Belichick will take that shit away. His defense is very good this year, and, and that offense know, can how, run the rock. He knows how to play Jacoby Brissett. Well, that's He's had the, him in his building. That's a fun angle too. Um, and Browns are thirtieth in defensive DVOA, thirty first in pass DVOA. But you could tell Belichick is going to fuck them up when asked about the defense this week. What did he say? He said they look fast. 
<laughs> That's the ultimate insult. He's complimenting uh, them. Are you kidding me? Cleveland's defense, six yards per play. They're allowing 25th in the league. I think they're going to be able to eat. I mean, you saw yeah. the chargers. Why did the chargers win that game? Cause Austin Eckler got whatever he wanted. I think Ramondre, h- how do you not have Ramondre in some of your DFS lineups? Cause that guy is going to go off. He had a really big game last week. I don't see how he doesn't have a really big game this week. Sounds like Harris, although being listed as limited is going to miss a two to six weeks. I, I still, I still don't um, that. Yeah. That still doesn't make sense. And last but not least, Brown of the elf by all accounts is still there. That thing is cursed. <laughs> I mean, you missed that field goal to win that game. That jets collapsed. How have you not painted over Brownie the elf yet? The Cleveland, fan. come on. It's the fans. Did you not learn anything? You've been a cursed franchise. You one guy got you out of the curse. You he beat your uh, playoff rivals. You shipped him out of a yeah. town for a guy who you know has. You have to know when to come. Who doesn't know when to come or not? No. And now, now you're you're being punished. Stefanski eight and six as a favorite. Eight and Stefanski eight and sixteen as a favorite. Lost three out of the last five straight up. Give me the give me the Patriots. Yeah, earmark this for teaser potential. Yeah, because uh, this is. Yeah, I, I'm slightly worried about only getting two and a half with Bailey Zappi on the road. That's my only concern. But I think I think they can scheme them up, and that's not what it's about. That Browns defense is just so bad. Yeah, it's not you're you're overthinking it if you're looking at the quarterback. It didn't matter last week either. The defense is very, very good. Jets, they're heading to Green Bay. Packers, another team this year, not taking the bye after after the London game. If you didn't hear the quotes the uh, from the Packers players, they seemed I mean, Rasul Butler flat or Douglas Butler Douglas. Butler Bo, Butler's the basketball player. Douglas uh how'd that get into my laser focus? Uh, he he basically said like this is fucking stupid. Matt Matt Lafleur was dealing with time change. Sir Matt Lafleur's circadian rhythm was uh, off. So come on, dude, don't don't use that as an excuse. This team wanted nothing to do with that road yeah. trip. You see why they were able to blow the game against the Giants. Now they're coming home into just a, a very 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 positive sp- spot, and I think I, I've heard a lot of uh, voices out there. Talk about how this Jets team is interesting. Hey, Zach Wilson is not that bad. Zach Wilson on the road against Aaron Rodgers in a spot where Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers are 10 and 0 ATS after a loss. Yeah. They're 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 being made fun of. It's it was uh, Yeah, I mean Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers this was not the story he wanted to tell. No, 36 he doesn't want cheese shoved up his arse <laughs> or maybe he does. I don't know. He he, he gets into some weird stuff. Uh Aaron Rodgers, 36 and 15 overall against the spread after a loss, 14 and 7 against the spread as a favorite of seven and a half or more, which is kind of right where this line is sitting. I mean, Zach Wilson only had 14 completions. Kind of a miracle they were able to put up 40 points. What concerns me is the Packers run defense, because that's really what the Jets do well. And Brees Hall, I think, um, could have a decent game. He's the first Jets running back to have 100 receiving yards since LaDainian Tomlinson in 2011. But the Jets have won back to back games and covered in both those games. Can they really make it three in a row? I I don't think so. And I, I think like this is obviously like a fun tease opportunity, but, but I isn't think- isn't especially this even this time of year, I think the Packers are desperate right now. Like they cannot this is they're uh, they're being made fun of for sure. I, I don't know if this you would call this quite a must win game. But this is definitely I mean it's right up there, right? Like they they just lost to the Giants. Um, you know, they they had that early loss to the Vikings the, the, as well. I, I would I would I would say this though. I, I think the argument would be the Jets defense isn't that good. They've had some miraculous shit happen. And like A, Aaron Rodgers should be able to pass the ball. And B, the Giants are they're turning into a a, a close to elite run defense. They've shut down a lot of good running backs this year. Teams that want to run the ball, Bears, Titans. Uh, they shut down. I mean, they they just shut down the Packers. They're at DVOA has them number six. So for the Packers to have struggled against the run against Don Wink Martindale and New York Football Giants, I don't think is the worst thing right now. And I 
I think when you see the contrast, I, I don't think the Jets are the run defense that the Giants Jets. are, and I don't think that Zach Wilson on the road is. I, I these I don't understand why folks are saying Zach Wilson is good. Well, Jets, we're, we're not we're not calling him good. I'm not saying he's good. No. Lay in no. seven. Give me Jets. Uh, rush DVOA is better than the than the Giants, for what it's worth. What? Um, yeah, Jets are 19th. Giants are 21st. Oh, I was looking at offense. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just keeping us honest here on yeah. the show, Ryan. That's a good call. Um, Sixth offense. Wow. That being said, though, I I think uh, I I think they will be able to run on the Jets. And again, it's Aaron Rodgers with a chip on his shoulder. What more do you need to to hear? I just the narrative of the Jets are good. It's a tricky one. It's tough to well, swallow because I I watched them get their ass beat by the Browns for a while, and then Joe Flacco pulled some shit out of well, his ass. Also, if if the Jets lose, they they can still be happy. Like, hey, we're three and three. We lost in Lambo. Yeah, you know, five hundred. No one thought we'd be here. Yeah. If the Packers lose, if the Packers lose back to back games to the Giants and the Jets, it's happened three times this this century. I think is the number. Or three times this decade to lose to the Giants and Jets back to back weeks. Oh, just any NFL it's team. Ha- it's happened three times this decade. Uh, yeah, because they've both been really horrible. So yeah, we're just gonna we're skipping down the road together today. One disagreement. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, you're not so, you're not feeling convicted. I, I can tell you this: we've already passed. No, I I, I like Green Bay. I'm just yeah. trying to look at any other spots where I'm not being as contrarian. Uh, are, contrarian. The sharps are on the Jets. It just and I doesn't, don't get it. It feels a little cute to ride the Jets for a third game. Packers aren't that public of a side here. No, I, I think it's a good spot. It's a non-conference road play. Yeah. When in doubt, fade them. Hey, you know what? You're not fading Fubo TV. In fact, you should fade cable, satellite. You don't need that. You got Fubo TV. College and pro football. You got the NFL Red Zone. Uh, games in 4K. Cloud-based DVR. No contract. No commitment. We do have Fubo TV set up here over a God's eye. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. Fubo TV free for seven days and you get 15% off your first month. Just go to Fubo TV.com slash S G P that's F U B O TV.com slash S G P. We're also brought to you by odds trader. Oh man. Love me some odds trader. Number one site for all your game day bets, whether it's weather injuries, play by play updates, uh, handicap and info, even your own personal bet tracker. Bet smarter, not harder. Odds Trader has you covered top to bottom. Anything you want when you're gambling. Oddstrader.com slash blue wire. That's O D D S Trader.com slash blue wire. Odds Trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. And Sean, worth noting, uh, LaFleur, 21 and 1 straight up as a favorite or six of six points or more. That that loss was last week to the Giants. So He's you, the man. You know, well, I mean, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty impressive record. I mean, a lot of that has to do with Aaron Rodgers. All right, should be noted because we're about to talk about Baltimore heading to New York to take on Dan Jones and the New York Football Giants. Giants plus five and a half, plus two hundred on the money line. Ravens minus two fifty. Forty five is the total. As I mentioned earlier, elite passing offense number two according to DVOA. The teams off of the London game this year. Not taking a buy. There's been two of them so far. One zero and one against the spread. Calling the Minnesota Minnesota game a push because that's where we picked it. And two and zero straight up. So maybe the bye week doesn't matter. Maybe you don't want to eat it after that stupid fucking game and you want to save it for later. Makes sense to me. I mean, to me, there's one narrative here. Baltimore. How do you not pick the New York Giants? Baltimore. Wink Martindale revenge game. Yeah. That that's one angle. If anyone knows how to stop Lamar Jackson, he coached the defense on the other side for years. There right now, well, the Ravens open, open space knows how to stop Lamar Jackson because that was slowing him down uh, against the Bengals last week. Wow, just throwing shade. Baltimore allowing 107 yards on on the ground a game. The Giants have been able to run the ball on everyone. The the that, problem that's the narrative to me. The problem is, uh, I, I guess. I would say Lamar Jackson's been really good against the blitz. 37, 56, 471, seven touchdowns, and only one interception when blitz this year. Maybe that is countered by Wink Martindale knowing how to play well, hold uh, on. Lamar See, Jackson. That's a lane that that is a TMZ take. 
How Wink's so? actually not b- blitzing a ton this year. Okay. He's only he's deploying blitzes on critical downs. I mean, you saw it in the Aaron Rodgers. He he's he's in those in those moments, those high leverage moments, he's sending it. If but other than that, he's not really doing that. And I would imagine if you played with Lamar, you would understand his weaknesses. I think they're going to do the same thing they've done to everyone else, and and basically say we're going to stop the run and dare him to pass a little bit. I mean, what did they do at the half with Aaron Rodgers? They were running the ball. They come out, and next thing you know, they're they're they're, they're dangling these looks to make them pass down the field, and their cornerbacks just made plays. So. Uh, I, I love the defense, the way it's being schemed up. I, I'm a little worried that if th- this does turn into a track meet, that Dan Jones won't be able to uh, keep up with the receivers he's got right now. But that's the other thing I like here: Darius Slayton <laughs> over the top. Darius Slayton catches a long touchdown. If well, it and, fucking and goes through Baltimore, his hands. Baltimore secondary has had real, real issues. I mean, there's a lot of if you play that game a hundred times, Baltimore could have lost that game a number of different ways. Very fortunate to have Justin Tucker. I think I think the Ravens get a three point win here, but I think this is the game where the spread Ooh. matters. Uh, Giants get the cover, Ravens get the win. Run, the Ravens are twenty six in rush DVOA, and oh. that's again that's how the Giants have moved the ball. Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, uh, is Saquon one hundred percent right? Because he's listed as questionable. Yeah, no, well, he, it's he went shoulder. out of the game with his shoulder. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a shoulder injury, a little stinger. He came back in the game. Uh, next man up, Sean. Yeah, Baltimore also 19th in adjusted sack rate. So they haven't exactly been getting the pressure. And uh, it, worth noting, we haven't had a ton of good situational spots to talk about, but Baltimore has had that crazy Miami game, the Patriots, which is always a, t- a rivalry game for them, Buffalo, and then Cincinnati. And Sean, who do they have next week? Another divisional spot against Cleveland. I mean, and then the Bucks. No, this is a this is this is a huge letdown spot for the Ravens. They just avenged the Bengals. You you have your I'm doing bullshit uh, jinxing face on. No, no, no. I would never. I would never try and jinx the Giants. Do not listen to Sean. He's not being authentic with you, (laughs) listener. Uh, No, they they beat the Bengals. The Bengals beat them twice last year, right? So this was a big thing. We got to beat the Bengals. We got to beat the Bengals. They beat the Bengals. Harbaugh. Oh, you fourth and goal. This time we kick a field goal. Oh, we got to figure it out. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, with the Ravens. Yeah, let's go hang down by the uh, aquarium. Yeah, get some crab fries. Yeah. So I think this wouldn't is, the Raven sound more like Ca-ca. no. This is that's the average. I can't do a great Baltimore accent. But yeah, got hey you guys want to get some uh, head to the hooters down at the uh, aquarium? Get some onion rings. Yeah, fuck shit up. Steal a suck, of Ravens. <laughs> I I think this is a massive letdown spot for the Ravens. Lamar never lost the. Give NFC. me the Giants as a home dog. M- Lamar's never lost to an NFC team. Uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, only twenty two and twenty five ATS as a favorite. Lamar, that that felt good to me. And Dan Jones won and covered four straight as a home underdog. <laughs> It's unstoppable. Let's fucking go. Giants stay ahead of the sticks. Top five and expected points uh, EPA on early down. So we'll like the scheme. Let's go. Plus five and a half. Bookies don't know what to do with that number. Minnesota oh. heads to Miami where the Miami Dolphins, the, well, Sean, they underperformed the spread by 21 points last week. Kind of an asterisk because they lost a the quarterback. But now Miami with Skylar Thompson, who, by the way, if you pl- if you played any preseason DFS, he probably made you some money. Plus three and a half here, plus f- one fifty on the money line, minus one eighty for the Vikings. Forty five and a half is the total. Whoa, fins up, Whoa. Ryan. Fins up. Love this Dolphins team this right. week. You're not supposed to love the close your eyes special. Oh, sorry. It's a gross dog, <laughs> but you got to take it. I mean, a oh. not Kurt Cousins as a non conference road favorite. Uh, it, th- Xavier Howard is back. That's yep. going to be huge Check. for this Dolphins Can defense. You p- pause for a second, because I I read multiple uh, people or multiple places uh, have this written that he's he's returning from multiple groin injuries. <laughs> what does that Long mean? Long Cox <laughs> guy gets after it in the off season. He's got big muscles down there. Miami's going to bring the heat against Kirk Cousins, and and Kirk Cousins struggles against the blitz. What's the one team, Ryan, with uh, good cornerbacks that blitz the shit out of Kirk Cousins on the road? It was the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Now, I, I'm obviously they don't have a dynamic quarterback like 
uh, Jalen Hurts <laughs> and a, and a pass game, but Skylar Thompson, Thompson is a lot like Jalen Hurts. And the Vikings defense have have struggled against really good and or really fast receivers. Tyree Kill, yeah. some would say he's almost as good as Quez Watkins, who got wide <laughs> open in that Monday night game. Yeah, he's now I know I know Tyreek's a little banged up, but man, I love this Dolphin spot. I I think yeah, Tyreek sounds like he's going to be playing. Uh, I I. I wonder what they're going to deploy here. Uh, I do like the the idea that Thompson getting the week of practice. Is Miami looking ahead? They have Flores next week in Pittsburgh. That's not a look ahead, a franchise look ahead spot. No. Nah. Uh, here's the fun. Here's the fun nugget. Um, this is the first time in this century that a team has started four and one while going one and four against the spread. <laughs> They've not covered the last four games. These all, these things all scare me. And yet they're still laying three and a half on the road here. You're supposed to lay the three and a half, not take it, but it's the close your eyes special. It's a home close your eyes special. So we're talking that even si- amps it up 69%, more. which is nice. Dolphins have one and covered three straight home games. Uh, per per a source close to me and Adam Schefter, it's the same source, but I, I may as well repeat it. Uh, despite suffering a foot injury and being in a walking boot after the loss to the Jets, the Dolphins are optimistic that Pro Bowl receiver Tyreek Hill will be able to play Sunday against the Vikings. Per source, so I this is just like the worst matchup of all time uh, for the Vikings, and I think situationally they could be smelling themselves a little bit. I mean, Ryan, who do the Vikings have next week? Not Cardinals. That's not a massive look ahead, but. Or no, they're actually going into the buy, which I've I've liked playing that. Um, but <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna I'm, you, n- I'm not going to this time. Teams looking uh, into the buy this week would be Buffalo, Los Angeles Rams, Vikings, and Eagles. So I'm gonna play some of those. <laughs> that it's three and one, Ryan. We found the one that's not gonna cover. It's the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota also, I, I would say this, Sean. Be on alert. This could be a heavy Mostert game. Yeah, Minnesota can't stop the run. We saw it last week with with the Bears. Uh, so I think this, even if Tyreek, like if Tyreek Hill ends up missing the game and the line goes up even more, I I almost like this is just going to be a gross spot where Miami runs the ball. They they get a couple turnovers because Kirk Cousins is doing Kirk Cousins things down there in Florida. Well, and he's going to be distracted with all that jewelry. I mean, you saw his reaction to that chain. Miami has plenty of jewelry. He's going <laughs> to see hu- spinning hubcaps. His mind's going to be blown. There's a ton of sinning down there. Ryan. He's going to accidentally like do some blow. Don't like that. <laughs> okay. well, you guys got some sugar here. Uh, all right, now I'll, I'll try a little sugar. Uh, Skipping down the road, agreeing on. Pitch, I mean, Sean. Kirk Cousins is Ned Flanders if he was a quarterback. Uh, the guy seems nice enough, can, but I don't think this is a a, a good spot for him. Can I, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the listening audience across the finish line here. Sure. Tyree Kill had the ping pong table removed from the locker room so the team <laughs> could quote get extra focused on the Vikings. I love it. I we know. we need. Can someone, one of our writers who are listening to the show, please? Do an article highlighting every time a news story surrounded them removing the ping pong table. Uh, real, it, I can think of like six off the top of my head. And real quick, I'm I'm pissed I didn't bring this up, but uh, Thursday night football, the Bears are wearing orange helmets. Yeah, could be gross. San Francisco heads to Atlanta from West Virginia because they had a bro weekend or week extended week of practice. They stayed out east. San Francisco lay in five and a half, minus two fifty on the money line. Atlanta plus two hundred forty four and a half is the total. Atlanta is the last man standing when it comes to covering the spread. They're a perfect five and zero oh against the spread this year, Sean. And uh, fun nugget: it's not often you have a five and zero oh, uh, team under five hundred. Uh, this is the first in the last forty years. Oh my God. They're the uh, to be, uh, they're the first five and zero ATS team to be a home dog since the 2015 dog. Steelers. Hmm. They won that game outright. Uh, Kyle Shanahan not great as a favorite of three and a half or more. I know God. this. This could be a look ahead spot maybe for the 49ers against the to the Chiefs. I know Bosa uh, is dealing with a groin injury. We reached out to Katie Mox see if she had any insight on his groin. Groin insider Katie groin Mox. Groin insider. Um, it, it sounds like 
they may not want to risk it because it's turf and they got a big game next week. I Her don't know. logic made a lot of sense to me. Yeah, even though I've read see. that it's trending, he might play. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Bosa tries to give it a go because he's a fucking dog. He's a caveman. He is. What he does, is he, he doesn't do? feel pain. Uh, Falcons offense is just real. I just this Falcons offense against this 49ers defense. I mean, Ryan, you had the. <sighs> You were ashamed to bring this data point to me, but Marcus Mariota, twenty three percent off target throws just versus field. this forty ers defense, which is just goddamn dominant. Um, you know, and, and to your, like the the Falcons are a very weird team because they they're they're just great at hanging around. They're not, not getting any game. respect. One they're the, covering every week, and there's no adjustment. It's hilarious because. The Falcons, how do they win games? By running the ball. What is San Francisco's strength? Number one in rush DVOA defense. Uh, it like just it's seems just like a bad matchup. Yeah. Uh, I did it last week and I just was so annoyed when they came back and covered. This team is just they're dogs, right? Here's the nugget. Kyle Shanahan on these trips where he stays east. Four and straight up, four and against the spread. All right. That's all I needed to hear. Let's go. San Francisco minus five and a half. I I recognize these road trips that help with culture. <laughs> I I do think that's a key matchup. Culture I, beats scheme. Chip Kelly said it himself. I I think like they uh, you also have the franchise revenge spot. Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, he'll have a chip on his shoulder. All right, let's move on to the afternoon slate. We got to keep track of the Carolina now third straight week where it's isolated as one of the three games <laughs> we have to watch. 105 kick here on the West Coast. Carolina heads to Los Angeles, where the Rams are laying 10, minus 5, 10 on the money line. Panthers plus 375. 41 is the total. We got PJ Walker. We got Steve Wilkes replacing Matt Rule, who is a heavy favorite to be the Nebraska's head coach. I also tidied up uh, the number on the the money he's getting paid, Sean. It's 430 odd thousand dollars a month. Yeah, someone and said if, eight thousand. Uh, like th- that doesn't work out. And if he gets hired, uh, the college team has to pick up the, uh, oh. or it comes out of that money. So you bet your ass he ain't coaching for a year <laughs> or whatever it takes to get paid out this forty mil. Uh, PJ Walker, you'll hear a lot of people talk <laughs> shit about him. <laughs> you have the same stat pulled. Well, it's, it's not much of a stat. It's a simple but stat. Two and zero, oh, two and oh, ATS, undefeated. Two and zero, oh, straight up. Now he's he like did a, he's two like a, touchdowns, eight interceptions. He's like a poor man's Cooper Rush. <laughs> I mean, his stats are horrible. He's barely completing fifty percent of his passes. I think I saw his interception rate was almost seven percent, which is it's not good. Stafford when not blitz. Now, of course, they played the 49ers mm. and they've played the Cowboys, who are great at creating pass rush oh, yeah. with their edge rushers. But just worth noting, when not blitz, two touchdowns, seven interceptions. <laughs> Dude, he's been a turnover machine. Uh, the offense, yeah, it was not good last year. Uh, The offense is broken. I mean, our buddy Ben Scournick outplaying how he's outplaying Allen Robinson. Eighteen catches. Allen Robinson only has twelve. Remember when we put Scournick on your radar last year? We were so close. I mean, that would have changed lives. Um, I saw you uh, cite the stat, J.C. Horn. Given up the least amount of receiving yards against receivers in the entire league. Like, you know, say what you will about Matt Rule. That was a good pick. Like, uh, you know, he just never found his quarterback. Maybe there's a good coach in him somewhere. Here, uh, here's what can I, I, I didn't mention it. Panthers are a close your eyes special as well on oh. the road here. Car- <laughs> Carolina's defense, Ryan, 11th in the league, 5.3 yards per play. And you, you put JC Horn on Cooper Cup. Yeah, I no, think they I, can ugly this game. They they don't have a great pass rush. They're second yeah. to last in adjusted sack rate, which is it's an, isn't great. McVay after a loss though is is worse. And I saw a uh, a a report on coach firing game after trends. Okay, so since two thousand three, there's been thirty two of them. Okay, teams have gone fifteen and seventeen straight up, and seventeen and fifteen against the spread in the games following. That doesn't sound great, right? It's the middle of the road. It's about 500. Those teams collectively were 84, 229, and two. That's almost, that's a little bit above 25 percent to that point. So to go from one out of four to one out of two, that that's a it's a, in the right direction. 
Same for the <laughs> ATS. They were one out of three ATS uh, to to about fifty percent. So I, I guess I guess you would theorize that there's a bump there. The team improves their performance in the short short term around this replacement. I certainly think if guys think that they're going to be like, what's the vibe? If you think you're getting traded, are you going hard? Or are you like, are you checked out? Cause I, I think like, I'm obviously going to play the close your eyes special. Yeah. Uh, even though the Rams, uh, I do think this Rams the, the uh, fighting Panthers, with Odell, maybe that the they're Panthers have kind of become. Uh, I mean, Ryan, you're the money slate guy, but uh, doesn't the public seem to be leaning Panthers here? That's certainly w- worrisome. Uh, let's see. I mean, it it does seem like there there are some. Um, the the two things that worry me is McVay after a loss, eight and four after against the spread after losing as a favorite, and then. Um, it's flattened out though. I think the money came in, it went down from 11 to 10. And now it's like, it's, it's not, it's a pretty even split, but we saw, we, I, I just, who the Rams can't be laying double digits against any teams right now. Their, their offense just, and dude, they're playing the fucking 49ers next week. I mean, they're, they're gonna, this is a, uh, um, no, oh no, they're, 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 they're going they're, into the, they're bye. looking to the buy. So this is one like. of the other <laughs> ones where I'm fading the looking into the buy angle. I, look, there, there's we handicapped a bunch, of, but it's the close your eyes special. We're gonna yeah. take the the team who's you know perceived value on the spread. Again, we, we've been saying this for a number of weeks. Stafford is giving other teams opportunities to score. It's just a matter if they're going to be able to. Arizona heads to Seattle, where the Seahawks are three point home dogs, plus one twenty five on the money line, minus one forty five for the Cardinals. I, I, <sighs> Seattle is in, in, incredible. Number two in yards per play in offense. Number one in offensive DVOA. Your Seattle Seahawks, thirty-two in defensive DVOA. This is this is the antithesis of everything we thought Pete Carroll was. It's great. You're supposed to be an old guy yeah. that do, that doesn't like throwing the ball and plays really gritty yeah. defense. He traded in uh, the, the family jewels for a Corvette, and he's just cruising around on the fucking on the residential roads, going eighty miles an hour. He doesn't give a. Fuck. Seattle 6.33 yards per play on offense. Arizona only 4.79. Um man, this is this is really a lot of strong trends going but, both ways too. Yeah. The the trend for me and this to me is kind of similar to the Indy uh Jacksonville game where I'm going to lean like the the history that these two teams have. The road team in this case always wins this game. They've won 11 out of the past 14 meetings, excluding that 2016 tie. Um, I know Seahawks are good as home dogs here, but I, I Arizona can get it done on the road. For some reason, that's the only time they. Tyler win. 17 six and two ATS on the road in his career. Is <sighs> it because he can't bring his gaming rig? They can't fit the. It could be. And they you, can't fit his gaming chair on the team play. It's also Kingsbury as a favorite, which isn't that good. But it's a small favorite. Uh, Pete Carroll as a dog. That's that's a sixty percent trend all time. Hollywood Look, Brown's gonna have a massive day. Arizona's zero and five. Defense. Arizona is zero and five with the Bears in the first halves this year. Yeah, this is your double result game. Seattle wins first. Seattle half. first half. Arizona Cardinals wins win game. the game. Uh, and we've seen it, right? We've seen how good Kyler can look in the second half. He's going to look good against this defense. He really this is. This defense allowed Taysom Hill and Andy Dalton to just put up how many points? I Come mean, on. They, they made they made Come uh, on. they made Andy Dalton look like Joe Montana back there. Come on. I, Arizona Arizona's the play. I, I'm a sucker for I'm surprised you're on Arizona. I really thought you were going to be sitting here telling me you uh, you like Gino. I do. I I like him in uh, DFS for the Millie Maker. Because your point, Ryan, um, there is something to having the losing quarterback in these games that can shoot out. Oh, you want I, him chasing? Yeah, and maximum I, speed. And I think I think there could be big plays both sides of the ball. Eno Benjamin is someone you should look Whoa, at for DFS. They have lost it. Ryan Connor. Been sitting on my bench in in the uh, main event for a couple for for all season. Can't wait to get him out. It sounds like Williams and Connor will be out. So. I, that doesn't really matter. And Seattle's though. horrible against the tight end. If you missed the DFS DFS episode, I didn't. I was going back and forth between Disley with the bring back or Ertz how to, how to build it, but Ertz should have a big game too. Like I, Ertz, Hollywood Brown, and then you could do um, for your stack and then come back with Lockett to mix it up. 
I don't think you can go wrong. I mean, no, it's it, it seems that way. Or, or is this the game where it all comes crashing down? All right, it's a division game, but they it's their their matchup in particular is always kind of weird. It's another. This is the NFC West versions of the AFC South's uh, yeah. transitive property rules. <laughs> all right, uh, game of the century. Game that was circled by Josh Allen last year after he blew the game by scoring too quickly. Buffalo heads to Kansas City. Coming off Monday Night Football here. So short week for Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. And for the first time, this is his 42nd home game. He will be a home dog. Plus two and a half, plus 125 on the money line. Buffalo minus 145. 54 is the total. You know, everyone's going to talk about the playoff game, Sean. Okay. I, dare I say, Kansas City revenge spot. Because Buffalo came to their house last year and beat the shit out of them 38 to 20, maybe 21. But does everyone, does the entire offseason, does everyone bring up that back to the, the Chiefs? No, players? but the, I'm sure the bill, Bills have great um, bulletin board material. Who, who but is, who, let me ask you this who's the best Chiefs offensive player besides Patrick Mahomes this season? It's a silly question. It's Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Bills against the tight end. Uh, they're good. They shut yeah. down Mark Andrews. I know. Shut down Mark Andrews. Shut down Pat Fryermuth. I, I could make a case that the Bills defense is the best unit on this field. Okay. I, I think the Bills, they've had this you game, like an under game here? for the entire year. This is going to be an ugly game. That's why I fade this in DFS. These teams know each other really well. Buffalo's defense, 4.4 yards per play, uh, right up there in total DVOA. Kansas City, the Chiefs struggle to get pressure without the blitz. You know who can get pressure without blitzing? The Buffalo Bills. You know why? Because they got Von Miller. That to me is That's the matchup that that worries me. Yeah. That to me is going to be the game difference because the the Chiefs, that you have two choices. You you can either sit back and let Josh Allen pick you apart, or you can bring the heat and, and Josh Allen handles the blitz so well, you're inviting him to run, which is a nightmare for the chiefs defense. I think the, I think the offenses are pretty similar, but the bills defense matches up so much better with the chiefs offense than vice versa. This is one of the few stadiums that, that there's a, there's a home edge still. And I, I totally, I get it. But I think, I think you're going to see I mean, we we need to get a table report from uh, Adam. Have if we get any news stories that the Home Depot in Kansas City, Missouri, What's the has spread been if it's sold in Buffalo? Out, um, let's say four and a half. So, what do you think the home edge is for this Kansas City team? I'd say it's at least two. So, if okay, it's two, yeah. If it's two, then we're saying on a neutral Buffalo's minus four and a half, which means at home they're they're laying six and a half, seven because they probably have three points at home. Yeah, but they would never. I, I I just think that standard like way of looking at it with like the two points for the home and blah blah blah. I just don't. I don't think it applies here. I think this I is think just it, trying to balance out the money. No, I think they're doing it because they expect to only get. Buffalo action. It went to three. They got smashed on Kansas City. Yeah. Like by sharps like me, who saw the value in the number. <laughs> I I Yeah, I, I just, you know, I don't I don't know if I mean they've played three road games and two of them were it was a two point game and a three point game. And they were they were tough games and I mean, I don't to, know to if that, Patrick Mahomes to the, to gives that, them that th those opportunities. To, though. to that point, I mean the the Chiefs almost lost to the Raiders at home, right? Divisional games, uh, Sean. That's like uh, sure, but that, I mean that's a divisional game. Okay, I, I'm just saying I of the matchups. To me, the and they were looking ahead. I think the Chiefs were looking ahead. I think that that game against the Raiders was an indication they fell asleep. They let them come out early. They had to come back. I don't. I don't like that for me. I taking don't think the they. Chiefs I here. don't think they look good. Uh, but the against, second I, I saw, I don't think they looked again good against the Chargers. The either Bills didn't look ahead, and the second I I knew, saw that, I was like, <laughs> oh boy, I was all wrong. I mean, I was all wrong. If you wanna, if you wanna take points, I was off, all wrong. Points off the Bills for destroying the seven zero and one again. He's never lost against the spread as a dog, Mahomes. This is come on. This, the, this is historic shit. 42 games, first time ever home dog. And I got plus three in my pocket for the purpose of the, this podcast. What do you call me? You take the two and a half. 
You take the two and a half. Let's go. You're not on the Bills, are you? Yeah, I've I'm now picked. The bills. I've picked against the Bills every week. <laughs> how's that? Been, how's that worked? Uh, what? Three and two, two and three. Yeah, that's not horrible. Dallas Sunday night football. Dallas, the Cowgirls. They're heading to Philly. Philly's laying six. Holy shit, huh? That's a confident line. Minus two six. You know, six is a key number now, Sean. Minus two seventy on the money line. Dallas plus two fifteen. Forty two is the total. What's the handicap here, Sean? Eagles by a million. I mean, you you saw the offensive that, line injuries not concerning you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jason Kelsey, Jordan Mailata, Lane, Landon Dickerson, and I, Isaac Sayamalu all banged up a little bit, but they all practiced today. They were limited, but they practiced again. Dickerson and Kelsey came back into the game after they got hurt. Kelsey uh, seems like he's a dog. Kelsey has a crazy, insane start streak going. He's not gonna not play. Sunday night uh, against, the, against Cowboys. the Cowboys. Now you can make a case, hey, that maybe they won't be a hundred percent. But the thing is, like, even if some of these guys go out, like the the offensive line is super deep. I mean, we saw we saw Driscoll fill, fill in for Milata. He looked pretty good. Like their backups are guys that could go and start on other teams, a la Matt Pryor. I mean, Matt Pryor <laughs> was like the third string guard, and he's the starting <laughs> left tackle for the Colts. I think that shows you where their offensive line depth is. So I'm not tremendously worried about the offensive line. Uh, Micah Parsons is dealing with the groin issue. I think that could be huge. Mm. And this is the this is the first real test for Cooper Rush. I mean, you have this is the this is the most hostile environment in the NFL. The Eagles in a rivalry game against the Cowboys wow. on Sunday on a primetime game. You know how many hours of drinking you can put in? For an eight o'clock, eight twenty kickoff, they don't really use D cell batteries for anything anymore. So what do they throw on? The, what do they throw at the players nowadays? Fuck Dallas, Ryan. Five Fuck and a, Dallas. Well, all right, Jason Peters is talking shit on the Eagles fan base. I was gonna say Jason v- Peters revenge. Spot. You, I mean, he's just walking by the <laughs> hornet's nest, taking an unnecessary punch. <laughs> the fuck, Dallas. AJ a- Brown's gonna have a huge game. He only had three catches last last game. Still don't know why. Dallas on a back-to-back road spot. Dallas uh, is the favorite uh, side, and and one of the one of the sides. Public's going to be all over the Cowboys, right? Yeah, I mean, early indications, um, you know, bets might be in the Cowboys' favor, money might be in the Eagles' favor. The sharps love the Eagles because they're sharp. All right. Last got, last but not least, no, this no, entire least. season, Hertz has been answering questions about his play. He can't. He can't. Uh, he can't complete passes yep. to his. If he he can't roll out to the yep. left, he can't throw across the middle. Nope. He can't win a game with his arm. No, nope. he can't beat Dallas. That is really oh the two, last big ATS check mark against up. this uh, against Jalen Hurts. Now he didn't play Ryan in that last game because the Eagles were resting their starters, as I predicted in the beginning of the season. They'd be resting their starters week seventeen against the Dallas Cowboys, which in fact they did. So this <laughs> is his chance. Got it. Five quarterbacks have started their careers five and zero oh straight up, and against the spread. Oh, great! Cooper Rush is one of them. Can you name the other four? Who are the other four? One is playing now. Really? Okay. Um, Three are not playing now. Two have won Super Bowls. One, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is the one that's playing. Started now. out really strong. Uh, sorry, wh- what was the other hints? Uh, two of them won Super Bowls, so only one is playing right now. Yeah, two won Super Bowls early in their career. I'm gonna say this could sound crazy, but Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner is oh, one. Wow, I'm the man. Uh, <laughs> what? A, that's a deep pull, right? Yeah. Uh, what? What? So wait. Big Ben okay. was another one, and Kyle Allen, <laughs> wow. Carolina. All right. That deep pull. That one would never would have figured that out. Uh, yeah. Fuck Dallas. What are we doing? Let's go. My, minus uh minus six. All right, Monday Night Football. Russ and his uh his whatever cells they shot into his his shoulder. Coming off the Thursday night game, so a little bit extra rest. They're heading to Los Angeles where confirmed Denver will have a lot of folks in the crowd. This will be a Denver home game, and they're catching five points, plus one ninety. On the money line, Chargers minus 235, 45 and a half is the total. We got silly, or at least I did, and I didn't listen to myself. You fade them at home, you bet them at the road. 
on the road. And I, I bet against them last week and it paid off. I think you have to fade them here. I, I it's, it's disgusting. Brownie the elf. It, <laughs> Brownie the elf was involved. It's disgusting, but I think you have to fade them here. Sean, here's my uh, angle on this game. Uh, Chargers four and one ATS yeah. Denver one and four ATS. So just the convergence of, of market value. And uh, I, I one negative on our, our guy, Russ dead, dead. three and 11 is last 14 primetime games. Yeah. I, I can't take just uh, got his ass beat by I, noodle arm. I'm himself. not gonna, uh, you know, Broncos are an auto fade. I mean, between him and Nathaniel Hackett, uh. Garrett Bowles is out. And I think that is actually huge, huge in this game. And, and a couple of the other, they might not need to run them them pass the ball though. They need to do something. <laughs> Cause I think the chargers while, while Denver has a pretty good defense, I think the chargers will be able to put up some points, but um, I don't know. I, I do think Denver's defense is quite good. And again, I think they're like, they're, there's no home edge here. And so I, I'm not so, and if you look at some of the underlying metrics on Russ, I know it doesn't pass the eye test for me, but there are some reasons to be optimistic that there is something there and it will co- eventually kind of show up. I don't, I don't think this is going to be a pretty game. In fact, Ryan, I said, Oh God, this is, no, this is ugly. This is ugly. What is going on? <laughs> That's the new uh, mm-hmm. Michael Irvin drop. Talking about stuff that is ugly. Oh. Team off Thursday night football. I mean, the Garrett Bowles, I, I was with you. I was making a case like, hey, Broncos, they ugly it up. You know, Russ is he's gonna empty the tank. Uh, he can't throw the deep ball with that labrum. I think it's gonna be way too one dimensional. He he's just not seeing the field well at all. The Garrett Bowles injury, honestly, to me, that was like the deciding factor because Ugh. This Chargers team struggles with the pass rush, but I think you put out a backup That's tackle with this offense and how bad it looks. I'm going I'm going Chargers here. I don't I don't love it. I'm not no, going to lock this up, but No, you shouldn't lock this up. I I to me I I think you're just this is a case where Den- Denver's been playing defense. Denver's been getting out No, the the Denver has very good defense. Uh, number two pass DVOA. We've t- we've talked about that off the offensive line for the Chargers, but I just don't think they're going to be able to put up any points. I mean, they put up nine points at home. Really, their red zone offense is fucking atrocious. <laughs> How are you so bad at that? I'm taking ten. It's okay. gross. I mean, it could be a it could be like a you know thirteen ten game. I said, oh god. This is, this is us watching the game. What is going on? I mean, it is annoying that we have another Russ game. Yeah, right? in prime time. He's <sighs> so bad in prime time. Is Herbert any better? No. Herbert's yeah. not good as a favorite. <laughs> but um again, I I think this is actually plays to uh plays to the strength here. All right, and uh Detroit would have been a close your eyes special. They're on a bye. Along with Houston, Las Vegas, and Tennessee. All right, that's it, Sean. We have uh, we, we we have two games taken away from us through the bye weeks. Make sure you check your fantasy lineups. Hopefully, Devonte Adams doesn't get suspended and miss additional time. <laughs> last Three week in cell in the cell doing pushups. Last week you went first, Sean. No, you went first. Okay. I'll go first this week though. Lock dog tees presented <laughs> by. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash win bets. Happy birthday. All righty. Let's go. Let's get some picks I'm ready. in. All right. I'm ready as well. Uh, all right. What do we got here? Do better this week. Yes, that's the goal. Uh, I, I want to take Green Bay again to fade the Jets, but I just just don't have it in me. Why, I'm gonna. T- you feel snake bitten? Yeah, I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take New England plus two and a half. Belichick just owns the Browns. I I think that to me is the biggest. They're gonna be able to run on them. I also like the Bengals there. Steelers a little too wonky. Colts. I'm gonna throw in the. Uh, I love their defense. Give me the San Francisco 49ers. Hmm. They're bound to. Uh, I mean, Atlanta's bound to not cover. And for my dog, dog, give me the Miami Dolphins. That one, I mean, they're gonna win this game, right? 
it, it's a, I mean, um, the only thing that worries me is how much you like it as a close your eyes special. Okay, that's fair. Um, all right, now time for the tease. I tease the Panthers up to sixteen. That's crazy. Don't need to do that. I'll tease Green Bay down to one. Very teasable number. It's a good tease. Tease the Chargers up to plus one there. Great tease. I would put New England plus eight and a half. Uh, no need to do that. Um, Chicago plus six is kind of interesting. Uh, take the uh, New York Giants up to eleven and a half. Ryan, let's go. All right, you. Uh, we play numbers, not teams, right? I've made two bets already. Okay. And we're gonna share a lock for the first time, really, because this New England is that a smash, is a disgusting smash act. spot. I was not prepared for you to take that from me. I, I, I don't want to feel foolish and go against the bill. The only lock loss I have is going against the Bills. Yes. So I'm not gonna put Kansas City in. Okay. There. What I am gonna do, I'm gonna take it to a next level diabolical angle. Colts, Colts <laughs> long rest in a matchup that they have. Dom long it. dominated. Sounds like t- Jonathan Taylor's trending in the right direction. Fucking Matt, Matty Ice. Hey, if they win this game, Sean, three, two, and one, baby. <laughs> Look out, dog. Dog. I I like your angle with Miami. Boy, give me the Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> plus three ten. Oh my god. This is the last week, though. The, <laughs> promise me that no more picking the Steelers after this. They're going in auto fade if they can't. Actually, no, this. get them out of here. I told okay. myself I was going to do this last week. Denver Broncos plus one ninety. Really? Yeah. That is a. Oh, what am I doing? I didn't lock up the Chiefs. Chiefs is the money line. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot AC it. I forgot. I didn't want to lose. Nine, there you go. One lock loss was the Bills. I learned my lesson. <laughs> Baby dog. And for the tease, Green Bay, agree with you. That that's a no brainer. Okay. You, you told me you didn't like it when I did it last week, but I hit. Give me New England up to eight and a half. Okay. And for the last leg of the teaser. Man, I how many how many points is too many points for Kirk Cousins? Oh fuck. I I don't give me Kansas City plus eight and a half. Fuck. It's the, the, I didn't want to do it because the the going against the Bills, but it's such a juicy teaser. Mahomes catching eight and a half. How often are we gonna get to do this? This is like seeing a fucking eclipse, dude. <laughs> Just don't, don't look directly at it. All right. So what are we doing for the uh, contest? New, New England. Put it on twice. Okay. Hopefully we can use the uh, Matt, Ryan, Matt Ryan and Garoppolo. San on. Francisco. <laughs> You're gonna put uh, Miami on there. I would, yeah, I'm happy. I'm fine putting Miami okay. on there. What's one more? Uh, I mean, I, you don't like, uh, I, I, we, if you want to pick one of the other two, close your eyes specials, I could do that. What are the remaining ones we don't have? Pittsburgh or Carolina? I mean, we've had shit luck with Pittsburgh. Let's go, Carolina. All right. So the circuit cards looking like <laughs> New England plus two and a half, Indy minus two. San Francisco minus five and a half, Miami plus three and a half, Carolina plus ten. We it's could pivot. Bounce. We could pivot with the Bengals or the Cardinals. Hmm. Bengals were close to a lock. Uh. All right. Yeah. Let's boot Carolina and put in Cincy. Maybe that's what I should do, so we don't double up our locks. Well, you're you're the lock specialist, right? Not- it's put Cincy in the lock spot. You're right. right. We haven't we haven't crossed streams. That's probably not the right thing to do. All right, that'll do it for the show. Again, gonna be putting out a uh, a uh, NFL props episode as well. Check out the Thursday night uh, bonus props ep- episode. And uh, what else we got going? Yeah, uh, screenshot a review. Send it in via the SGPN app. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. I guess uh, go Matt Ryan. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs> <laughs>